When I was a child, my family's home in what is now called Zimbabwe was a group of small round huts made of logs covered with mud. A mango tree close to our home provided fruit and shade where my mother would tell us stories and teach us important life lessons. As comfortable as it was beneath the mango tree, my mother also taught me that for my growth to continue, I would need to venture beyond its shade. Years later, standing all alone, one Sunday morning in front of the Letter Day Saint meeting house in a seat called Kwekwe, I had never felt farther away from the shade of that tree. I had been reading the Book of Mormon I had received from my employer years earlier. I was discovering the simple good news of Jesus Christ. I began feeling that I should go to church. I knew where the meeting house was, and for the next few Sundays, I stood a safe distance across the street and watched those who entered. I felt inadequate. I worried that I would not fit in with them. Many of them drove vehicles. The men dressed in white shirts and ties, and all of them were white. I reasoned that I probably needed to wait at least until I could afford to purchase a white shirt and a tie. Two members of the church noticed me and saw my timid interest. They encouraged me to go to a Sunday meeting even before I had a white shirt and a tie. With a little nudge, I finally gathered courage to walk into that building. I remember that day clearly. It was February 5th, 1984. I was 21. And as soon as I entered the chapel, I immediately wanted to walk right back out. I felt that I was so different than most of those in attendance, but I stayed and sat down on the back row. As the meeting progressed, the branch president stood up and bore witness of the Savior Jesus Christ and the Book of Mormon. Then he invited people in the congregation to share their witnesses of the truth. Two members stood and express their faith in the Savior Jesus Christ and testified of the truthfulness of the Book of Mormon. As I listened, I began to feel that I could connect with these people. Their words brought comfort and peace to my mind. Suddenly, I found myself on my feet. Yes, I was the fourth person to speak in the meeting. I said, I too am reading the Book of Mormon. I like it and I love Jesus Christ. Thank you. Then I quickly sat down. After the meeting, a few members approached me and said I was welcome in the church. A sister told me about Sunday school. A brother invited me to priesthood meeting. And another member told me of a class on Tuesday night that I could attend to learn more about the gospel. I felt overwhelmed by the love of these members who were willing to go beyond the shade of their own mango trees to welcome a young man who may have felt different than they were. But they helped him realize that we are all brothers and sisters. Before long, I was able to enter the waters of baptism, then serve as a full-time missionary in my home country of Zimbabwe. I have since been blessed with a faithful and beautiful eternal companion now made, and four wonderful children. Together we have been blessed to devote our lives to the service of the Lord. There is great feeling in knowing that we are all children of a loving Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven loves all, regardless of our circumstances, race, socioeconomic status, language, sexual orientation, political orientation, nationality, or even religious affiliation. While the world's approach is that of labeling individuals, the most inspiring and motivating way for characterizing ourselves is that each of us is a 
precious son and daughter of God.